All right. We're going to do uh, a couple examples using uh, the same problem. We use a lot of different techniques on the same problem, so you get a feel for how the different techniques compare uh, while always having the same uh, solution available to you. So the problem we're going to consider in, in a couple of these video examples is the following. dx dt minus rx equals s <coughs> e to the r2 t. I'll make that r1 x. Uh, as you can see, it's a linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients and a non-homogeneous forcing term that is an exponential. Uh, a physical, uh, real-world interpretation of this ordinary differential equation uh, could be obtained from uh, finance. So if we imagine moving this over to the other side of the equal sign, we would have dx dt equals r1x plus s e to the r2t. And so let me just do that for a moment. Uh, how would this uh, relate to finance? Well, um, this would be like interest. The rate of change of your balance would be equal to R1 times your balance. That's how interest works. So R1 here would correspond to the interest rate. And then this non-homogeneous term, S e to the R2t, would be additional savings rates that start out at some uh, initial rate S when t equals zero. And then increase exponentially with time. So this would be a situation where, say, you save 5% um, of your salary every year, and say, furthermore, that you get a 3% raise every year. Well, then the amount you saved would rise by 3% every year from the starting value. So in that kind of example, R2 would be your 3% annual raise, R1 would be your interest rate, which may be, say, I don't know, 4 or 5, 6%, depending on how you invest. Uh, so just for the sake of convenience, there's no reason that one needs to be larger than the other, but let's hope that uh, R1 is greater than R2. And let's say that you're just starting out, it's the beginning of your first job, uh, and so x of t equals 0 is 0. 0 starting balance. So in this video, we will solve this equation by first solving the homogeneous solution, and then finding the particular solution and combining them to form a general solution. So let's start with the homogeneous solution. So the homogeneous solution would involve ignoring the forcing term, the uh, associated homogeneous equation in which the forcing term is neglected, and we can solve that by separation. We would have dx, if we divide both sides by x, we'd have dx over x equals multiplying both sides by dt, r1 dt. So ln of the absolute value of x, when we integrate both sides, gives us ln absolute value of x, r1 t plus an undetermined constant. And when we take exponentials of both sides, we'll get x equals c e to the r1 t. Uh, the c tilde is replaced by, and the absolute value signs on the x are both uh, it, it replaced by this regular constant c, which is anything between minus infinity and infinity, as we saw in, on the first week. So here's the homogeneous solution. x homogeneous is c e to the r1 t. Now let's apply variation of parameters. So the assumption of variation of parameters is that we look for a particular solution. Let x p of t be an unknown function u of t times the homogeneous solution, e to the r1 of t. So this is a, a guess which we're going to insert into the governing ordinary differential equation. Uh, it might also be known as a, a change of variables because it will, uh, instead of solving for x, we will end up having to solve for u. So let's insert this guess into the ODE. When we take the derivative of this product, we get du dt e to the r1 t plus u of t times r1 
e to the r1 of t. That is the derivative of this product. Um, equals r1 times u of t e to the r1 of t plus s e to the r2 of t. Uh, in my explanation, I, I took that out of standard form. I have this term on the right-hand side, uh, which is why these two terms show up on opposite sides of the equal sign. If I'd left it in standard form, we would have had this minus that on the left-hand side. In any case, they cancel, as expected, from variation of parameters. And we can now solve for u. du dt is s e to the r2t divided by e to the r1t is e to the r2t minus r1t. And so u is the integral of s e to the r2 minus r1 times t dt. This is a straightforward exponential integral, which is s e to the r2 minus R1 of T over R2 minus R1 plus a constant. And if we then take this solution for U, multiply it by the homogeneous solution E to the R1T, we find X of T is multiplying through by e to the r1t. Here we will uh, cancel that term. We have s e to the r2t over r2 minus r1 plus c e to the r1t. Now, this is the particular solution. You'll note that when we leave this integration constant in here, as we ought, uh, we do, in fact, get an undetermined multiple of the homogeneous solution that comes out as part of the particular solution. Um, this is an example where uh, the particular solution, the, this vocabulary in, in the field is a little bit confusing. Different people mean different things by the particular solution. Our textbook says that any solution which satisfies the forced ODE can be called a particular solution. So this solution here, even though it contains a, a homogeneous component, can be called a particular solution because it solves the forced equation. Uh, I am not aware of a unique name for this object. Uh, this is what I think of when I say particular solution um, because this is the one thing that uniquely satisfies the forcing uh, while not, in fact, satisfying the, the homogeneous equation. So this is the thing you're looking for you do, in fact, pick up an undetermined multiple of the homogeneous solution, but you already know that there's going to be an undetermined multiple of the homogeneous solution. So this should not concern you if you see these kinds of things um, appearing, if you get multiples of your homogeneous solution. That's okay. You should, in fact, get them because you have your integration constant, and they are, in fact, allowed because uh, they are the homogeneous solution. But this is the object that was really uh, the thing we were looking for. So we found uh, the, the unique particular solution, or the general, uh, again, the, the vocabulary is, is not as precise as, as we might like. But we can now write the general solution. It is, in fact, just this, the unique thing that satisfies the forcing plus an undetermined multiple of the homogeneous solution. We have only to satisfy the boundary condition. So let's plug in t equals 0. When t equals 0, this is 1. And this is 1. So we just get s over r2 minus r1 plus c. And that must equal 0 to satisfy our initial condition. So that means c is negative s over r2 minus r1. And we can write x of t as now. <coughs> They'll both have a common factor of s over r2 minus r1. 
we'll just have s over r2 minus r1 times e to the r 2t minus e to the r 1t. And if you want to be uh, arrange them a little bit differently, we noticed that r1 was greater than r2, which means that this denominator is negative and this numerator is negative. So if we wanted to put it in an even more nice form, we could say uh, just multiply top and bottom by minus 1, e to the r1 t minus e to the r2 t over r2, sorry, r1 minus r2. So these are equivalent representations of the solution, but that is the solution. So homogeneous separation to solve the homogeneous equation, variation of parameters to solve the particular solution, and we obtain a general solution satisfying the uh, initial condition.